video number two are you prepared for the kingdom of god is the kingdom of god in your heart i'm going to go into more specifics of what i do number one number one like i said in the last video you empty yourself the greek words kenosis jesus emptied himself at the cross he said not my will but thine will be done and so jesus went to the cross we go to the cross we die to self okay it's not my will it's jesus's will i want to do what he wants don't follow any man don't follow me don't follow anybody you have a personal relationship with Jesus. You only follow him. And that's important. That doesn't mean that there isn't church leadership or someone that talks about it. That's all good. And the Spirit will lead and guide you into the truth of who's talking true. I would highly recommend you get away from most, the majority, of what is not the faithful church. They're unbelieving. And they have a problem. Because it says in the Bible, because of unbelief, they did not enter in. It says in the Bible, what is not faith is sin. They don't have faith. They are operating in unbelief. It's very simple to figure that out. Um, so, number two, okay? When you take up your cross, you crucify the flesh. Remember, Jesus' flesh was crucified on the cross. You are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. Not you, but Christ lives in you. When you are crucified, you stop sinning. Your body becomes a holy temple, the temple of God. Jesus comes into you. He's in your heart. He's in your mind. Let the mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. That's not somebody who's continuing in sin. Now, he's an advocate. Anyone, everyone, including me, can sin. Temptation will always be real. But it says in John, what is it, 3, 9? 1 John 3, 9? Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin and cannot sin because their seed remains in them. You know what it means? Your seed remains in you. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the good seed. You're producing good fruit. Why can you not sin? Because you love Jesus. You pick up the whole armor of God. You wrap yourself in the armor of God. You have a shield of faith. And by faith you stand, and the fiery darts, the temptations, the flesh is crucified. And under the subjection, now wait a minute, not of your will, no, stop. Your, your flesh is under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. Because if you think you with your will can control your flesh, you're in big trouble. Hmm. You have to go, Jesus, I want my flesh to be under your subjection. And he says, great, I sent you the Holy Ghost with power. And the Holy Ghost residing in you gives you the power to be able to walk holy. It's his grace, but you have to have faith. If you don't have faith, now let's make it real simple. If you don't have faith, then why would God even care whether you are anything? See, it's according to your faith. So, number three, okay, what do you do to make sure you're in the kingdom? Paul said, I examine myself daily. You examine yourself to see if you are in faith. You're not in faith if you're cussing at God. You're not in faith if you're involved in pornography. You're not in faith if you're a drug addict. You're not in faith if you like to uh, shoplift. You're not in faith if you're mad and, and trying to beat people up. That's not faith. That's all flesh. That's all sin. If you don't trust Jesus to provide for you, that's not faith. And what's going to happen in the future is you're going to be put between a rock and a hard spot. And if you are standing by faith, guess what you're going to do? You stand. If you don't have faith, you will fall. And if you fall, you'll fall right in the arms of the Antichrist. He said, don't worry, I promise you peace and safety. Come here, take my mark. That's exactly what the false churches are doing today. Come on in, we don't care if you're gay, we don't care if you're a Wiccan, we don't care if your children read Harry Potter books, uh, we don't care about any of those things, we're all dirty sinners, saved by grace, just come in and feel the love. Feel the love. There is no judgmental, nothing here. We are all into diversity and equity and inclusion for all. Well, the output's the same. It's all equity. The output is all equal. It's equity. So the worst sinner that ever was is just as saved as the person who does good. Now, that's all a lie from the devil. And that's what harms children. They go right, the devil always goes right after children. And that's his prime objective. He wants to destroy the lives of the adults and especially the children. You, as an overcomer, you have to examine yourself. Do you, very much, do you have things in your life that are darkness? Like what? Music? Like what? Movies? Like what? Video games? Pictures? Do you have pictures hanging on your wall that are dark? Do you even know what the difference is? If you don't know the difference between dark and light, if you've been called by God, and you probably have or you wouldn't even be watching this video, if you've been called by God, why do you still have darkness in your house? You can't serve two masters. That is making sure you are prepared for the kingdom. Take all of the dark stuff out. Put it in the trash. Have good things in your life. Things that are light. Things that are fun. Things that are uphold, upholding, upholding and wholesome. Good things. Things that are, are, are sensible and logical and reasonable. Get the dark out. And if your heart is dark, your mouth will tell on you. 
If you're a man, love your wife. The other women, don't. You can love her with all your heart, and she is where you pay attention. And there's nothing wrong with paying attention. Give your attention to your wife. You see, when you, when you speak words, if you are in the kingdom in your hearts right now, you will only speak words of faith. When you have words of unbelief there, the Holy Spirit will quicken you and lead and guide you into all truth. And you're going to end up understanding the difference between faith and unbelief. You see what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to have to really be careful because if I don't buy this insurance, the tree, oh, the tornado, the floods, my car, somebody's going to run into me, all of this. All those words are all unbelief. Faith would be, Jesus is my assurance. Every step I take, he is with me. I have angels around me. Thank God. I love you, Jesus. And he provides my way and protects me. You see? And if you look at maybe the next point, number four or number five, are you part of the world? If you are in the kingdom of God in your heart, you're not of the world. The politicians all fight. All you got to do is look at any of the news shows. They're fighting. The Democrats against the Republicans. They all fight, fight, fight. Kingdom against kingdom. Politics. Uh, your political parties. They all fight trying to figure out what's right. Well, this, this side calls the other side. Well, there's an old saying in politics, the first liar don't stand a chance. But even if he isn't, you're fighting for the kingdoms of this world, which are owned by the God of this world. We're not of this world. We're with Jesus. You have total testimony of faith in Jesus. I'm not part of this world. Who are you going to vote for? Jesus. What are you talking about? We've got this guy or that guy. Who are you going to vote for? I said, listen, I'm not of this world. I follow Jesus. He's the one that's bringing the kingdom in, not these people. Not a preacher who's telling you that he is establishing the kingdom or the Christian church is establishing the kingdom now. No, 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 no. Jesus is going to come in on a horse with a sword and he's going to take out the false church and establish his church, the kingdom. He's doing it. Not, not some preacher behind a pulpit wanting your money. No. The church is so corrupt, my best advice to you is to go straight to Jesus and follow him. And I guarantee you, he'll get you out of these churches that are full of religious spirits. But be careful. If you open your heart to their teaching, their deceptions, their seducing spirits, their doctrines of devils, you can let the darkness in and you can start believing the lie like Jesus said. Because they don't have a love for the truth. This is in the heart. He sends them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie. This is the false church. And they will be damned for it. They will heap unto themselves teachers with itching ears. They're going to tell you just what you want to hear. And the churches are full of phony people. You want to find out? Just go downtown and ask anybody walking up and down the street. Just start asking people. Do you think the churches are legitimate? And they'll start laughing at you. Because they can see through it. They're not blinded by some false doctrine. They can see right to it. These people aren't for real. Okay. Being kingdom now ready in your heart is having a total confession of faith. Do you know, Jesus said, you are healed according to your faith. Do you know what it says in the Old Testament? God is my healer. And God told Israel in the Old Testament, if you do not do the things the Egyptians do, I will not put any of their diseases on you. There are people who do what the Egyptians do around you right now. I'm talking spiritually. They, oh, well, you got Christians. I know a Christian family. They, they're wrapped up in Halloween. Halloween's the biggest thing. They've got ghouls and goblins and demons and ghosts and skeletons all over their yard at Christmas. They're doing what the Egyptians do. I mean, at Halloween, excuse me. They're doing what the Egyptians do, okay? Guess what? They're sick. Every one of them's got chronic diseases. I mean, all kinds of terrible stuff. I'm not going to go into it. The worst stuff you can imagine. And they're all drinking, cussing at God, and then they get their Bibles out, and then they all pray to God, and it is the craziest mess you ever saw, and there's disease all over the place. I'm saying, Jesus is your provider. You know, put faith in him. Put all your faith in Jesus. He sends you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will be in your life and protect you. You don't have to worry about the police department being there. You just stand in faith, and you watch the Holy Spirit protect you. I was in Indianapolis in a very, very dangerous situation. The Holy Spirit come in and surrounded me and protected me from a gang on the street downtown. It was amazing. We'll go to number three, video number three.